we'll start with the game in Crow Park. Uh, Dublin 319, Mead 12 points. Um, usually do a match reaction after the games, but since we're doing this show at half seven, I figured we'll, we'll combine the two into one. Yeah, look, overall, Dublin's performance, I thought, was uh, in the first half very sloppy, very poor. Opening 20 minutes were a little bit bizarre. It was three points apiece. Um, me definitely started the better. I think they kicked the opening two scores of the game. Um, you know, you're getting a few flashbacks maybe of Dublin and Kildare last year um, in the in the Leinster semi-final watching that first half. Dublin just really reluctant to shoot, overplaying the ball. Uh, Cluxton, I thought, actually had a quite a poor game, which is very unusual. His kickouts were, were quite poor, um, which, which you don't really see. So maybe a bit of rustiness there from his point of view. Uh, but look, all in all, Dublin pulled away in the second half. Uh, once all the goals obviously started flying in. And um, yeah, atmosphere-wise, not the best game. I think that goes without question. I think anyone who wasn't on the hill, you know, probably had a few spare seats uh, beside them because that was how it looked anyway from the stands. But yeah, command and victory for Dublin, uh, albeit once again a dublin Mead game that certainly won't live up to the ages or, or, or go down in the ages. It looked like Mead were going to put it up to them, especially in that first half. But then, as soon as the manual went goal, goal went in, as I mentioned there, just the atmosphere died. Um, to be fair, like Mead deserve a bit of credit, like how they set up in the first half. They frustrated Dublin, and we were questioning during the week what way would actually Mead set up? Would they go defensive? Would they go attacking? They kind of went with a bit of both. They pushed up on Cluxton's kickouts, and to be fair, like Cluxton did perform poorly, but that was really down to Mead just pushing up on them. But then in the second half, honestly, I don't think it was throwing in the towel or downing tools or whatever. I don't think it was just tiredness from a Mead point of view. I just think that not at the fitness level of where they want to be and Colin O'Rourke probably I listened to him in the post-match interview afterwards and he was kind of don't be about the second half more in particular like the first half he was very very positive he was saying that they, they got in Dublin's faces and that was what their plan was going up to Crow Park but um, but yeah just in the second half it kind of all fell down but uh, but then um, even on the Sunday game like I was watching it um, on RT2 and Lee Keegan and Kieran Whelan were talking about it and they uh, in many other games, including um, you know, the other championship games and Camogie and LGFA, you'll be talking about how the game went and uh, the man of the match performances and things like that. For Paul Mannion to get man of the match, they were just basically, if Lee he was just saying, could have chosen anybody really, but we're going to choose Paul Mannion, one six on the day. But then again, the, the championship structures is all wrong. Like that, that was what this game was all about. It was about championship structures. It wasn't about the game, which was kind of a shame. It was kind of a disrespect, in my opinion, to me to made a good show of Maryland in the first half. They just aren't up to the level yet. But look, Dublin absolutely pummeled them in the second half. And um, yeah, I suppose we'll have to go into the championship structures, Aaron, because a lot of other podcasters mm. and particularly the people on the Sunday game are doing it anyway. Yeah, yeah, we, we we might maybe touch on the Dublin Mead rivalry maybe as a as a whole. Like Shawnee says, uh, watching Dublin Mead along for the days when he had a dirty, cynical game between them back in the the eighties and nineties. Uh, Shawnee also says the game should have been a nav, and yeah, hundred percent it should have been. And looking at the crowd, you know, obviously the attendance, you know, factors in everyone who was who was at the Camogie as well. So I don't know what the attendance was overall to be honest they didn't call out the attendance yeah, I, think, I, I, I think i heard Aaron, it was twenty one thousand and something really for the whole for the whole thing that's, that's that's what i heard in the sunday game anyway i might be wrong no but that's what i heard mm. wow yeah yeah i mean to be fair they, they didn't look like there was twenty one thousand in crow park when i was there but it was just one of them where i, I just presumed so many people left you know like uh, obviously after the camogie action so yeah like that's that's quite because they didn't call it out in, in Crow Park, I don't think, which usually they do. That's probably, um, probably the reason why, yeah, yeah. So that that probably that probably tells you why. Um, usually they do call out the attendance, but they, they, they didn't for, for whatever reason. But, um, but yeah, look, I mean, like it was weird because Dublin won the game by what 16 points, and I don't even think Dublin got out of third gear, like, I don't even think they played that well. Like, the first half was really sloppy, really poor. Um, they got a couple of late goals. Obviously, Conor Callahan uh, gets himself a goal and two points. Paul Mannion with one six. Sean Bugler with a very good goal in the first half. But yeah, like it, it certainly wasn't Dublin's best overall performance, which is a little bit bizarre because you beat one of your biggest rivals by sixteen points, and I'm sitting here being like, I don't think Dublin were actually at their best. They, you know, and to be fair to Mead, 
as you said, me do deserve credit because in the first half they gave Dublin a good run for their money. Um, they had a couple of you know couple of big chances and um, scoring wise, I thought they were quite impressive. In the second half, yeah, they they probably kept the ball too much in large parts, but they they also looked very contempt and and actually quite happy when they were seven or eight points down, and they looked almost like we'll accept this now. Like there wasn't really a they didn't really look like they were going to push up and, and try and go after it, which you don't blame them because if they had done that, they could have lost by even more. So, yeah, it was just a, it was a very strange uh, feeling at the game. And, um, you know, to be honest, there was a there was a portion of Mead fans at the back of the hill who were singing and fair play to them. They had a few they had a few funny chants and, and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, overall, like it was, I don't know, like they didn't look like there was many Mead fans there. And I don't blame them, to be honest with you. Yeah, I probably don't either. And uh, going back to um, Shawnee's comment there about uh, the game being part talent, and I talked about this during the week as well, and yeah, it should have been, no doubt about it. Um, I actually don't know the reason why um, the game got moved to Crow Park. I think the only reason it honestly got moved to Crow Park was because of the Camogie and the Camogie trying to gain more revenue and things like that. But to be honest, like even without the Dublin and me game, I think you still would have had the drama that you got in the Galway Tipperary game. So I don't think that was an excuse whatsoever. And it was great that Tipperary got their win in the end. And honestly, this Mead and Dublin game needed to be in Park Talton. It needed a bit of life into it. It needed a tight crowd. It needed the crowd to get on their back. It needed a Mead team that would punch Dublin back, basically. And um, I think this Mead team are capable of doing that. Colm O'Rourke has instilled a bit of confidence into them, in a way, in Division 2 and the game against Longford. But they, need, they needed... Like a stadium that would suit them, a part mm. Talton, the crowd will get in their back, a port leash as well. And they just didn't have that. Like Crow Park, you could basically hear the seagulls, I'd imagine. Aaron. Obviously, I was watching the TV there. Yeah. You probably would have heard the seagulls there. That was exactly what happens, apparently. So, so you know, that's um, that was the way for the game. And uh, it was just a shame. And even Lee Keegan, before the game, was even talking about him. The potential Dublin and Mead rivalry and things like that. And Lee Keegan just said straight up, this isn't the rivalry. And I think, honestly, that would hurt Mead fans. It would hurt them. And I think Mead fans would want this to be a rivalry again. I think every GA fan would want this to be a rivalry again. But yeah. for that to happen, we need something extraordinary in um, something like a stadium like in Park Talton, where the crowd is tight, where the pitch is tight, where Mead would basically give it to Dublin. At every opportunity, so yeah, I honestly don't get why the game was on at Crow Park. I think it was a missed opportunity, as I said in my tweet during the week. And, um, and yeah, that's all I have to say about it. It was just a poor decision, really, from the Leinster Council to play this game at Crow Park. And to this, re- to this day, I actually don't know why, like, even Davy Rispin was saying, um, during the week to you that. Apparently, the, the stand isn't the reason why uh, me backed out of it. So, like, I, I honestly don't know what was the, the initial reasoning uh, for going to Grove Park because I can't find any um, substantial reason why it got moved to HQ. Yeah, like it, it is it is a bit of a mad one. Like, and I was just looking at it there. Like, Park Talgen obviously holds 11,000 Port Leash, 27,000. Um, they, they definitely like, you know, like, because. How many were actually there for the Dublin and Mead game? It might have even been under 11,000. So they might have actually just been better off. They probably actually would have generated more revenue that way. Um, so, And even if they, they, they had a move to Port Leash or, or Tullamore, I know maybe that's a little bit unusual because you have both sets of fans travelling outside the county. But I actually think more people would have went. Um, like I know plenty of Dublin fans who, who didn't go to this game. But I think if it was in Navan or Tullamore or Port Leash, I think they probably would have went because... You know, us dubs, as much as, you know, everyone slags us for not, you know, traveling and not going to games. I think a lot of us actually love going to games. We love away games and, and everything else. It, it is a great bit of crack and, and everything else. So, um, yeah, it is a it is a massive, massive shame. And uh, fairness, uh, JPG or JPC was saying, get these games out of Crow Park. Market our games better, make them uh, attractive to go to. Um, yeah, it is a it is a fair point in fairness. And yeah, like what you were saying about what Lee Keegan said about the Dublin Mead rivalry and saying it's it's dead and everything else. And I was kind of thinking on the way home as I was walking back from Crow Park, like what needs to happen for the Dublin Mead rivalry to come back? Or is it just going to be like this now forever? Because, you know, like through the 90s, through the 2000s, Dublin and Mead 
games were absolute classics. I remember going to the Dublin Mead game in, in 2006, the game that went to a replay. And, and funny enough, actually, when I was chatting to Davey Rispin, as you were saying, from the We Are Mead podcast during the week, he, you know, he asked me the question, what's your greatest memory from Dublin and Mead? And to be honest, I nearly struggled to answer because like, there's been a lot of great wins. And don't get me wrong, some of the... When, when a few of the early demolitions came along, you know, in, in 2016 or 2015, some of them were quite enjoyable, don't get me wrong, but after a while then, it's, it's just starting to to get ridiculous, do you know, that way. Like, I think if you start beating your rivals 10, 15 points every year, then it, it sort of loses its value. So, yeah, like, I think the, Mead, the Dublin Mead rivalry, like, I know Mead have regressed as well. I do think that should be mentioned. Obviously, they have regressed quite a bit. Over the last 10, 12, 15 years, Dublin have obviously been at their absolute best as well. So I think both of those two reasons are very much intertwined. But I do think at the same time, something probably does need to be done in terms of do, changing up the Leinster Championship ever so slightly to try and fix this. Um, because, you know, if we're sat here in another 10 years talking about this, then before we know it, like the Dublin Mead rivalry will be, will be a myth, it will be a legend, it will be something that will be mentioned to grandkids and then be laughed at you know that way so um yeah they need to look at it and to be honest it's the same for uh, rivalries that were historic in the past and they uh, have lost all relevance now like even looking at dublin and kildare like that that's kind of gone out of fashion now i know kildare had that win in newbridge but in the league but but dublin seemed to you know ease past victory in that game cork and Kerry's the same thing and i go back to this argument this a childish argument to this would be to say Dublin banned them for money and uh, banned them for Crow Park and things like that. I think it honestly has to go down to the Meads, the Kildares, the Corks of this world to improve better because I think there's no secret that those three counties have regressed massively over the last few seasons, especially um, the, the likes of Meath and uh, Cork. To be fair, Kildare, they're division, they were Division 1 a couple of seasons ago and they competed well in that division. But for me, I do think they're making strides to become a better team. But yes, they won the Tantum Cup last season. But why were they in the Tantum Cup in the first place? Because of because of poor performances in years gone by. And yes, they won the competition, but that's a good start. They need more building blocks. And Colin O'Rourke, I think, knows that. I think he knows it. And I do think there's still some young players. There, there is still some potential there in me. Like, there was still some good performances today, despite the big beating. One frame shot well today. I think Jordan Morris scored three points from play. Key McBride came on and did very well in midfield. Matthew Costello was a colossal at times in the game today. But I think it goes down to more strength and conditioning, better improvement for me. And ultimately, I do think it would work if they keep Colin O'Rourke in the job, if they keep Trevor Joyce in around him, the panel, if they keep Sean Boylan in around him, the atmosphere as well. I do think me will come back to prominence one day. But it will take time. There's no doubt it will take time for me to come back to it. But Dublin, it's unfortunate for me to kill there because Dublin seemed to be getting better. Like they, like you look at their performance, they, they were second or third gear and they absolutely was the victory. And that's the honest truth. Of it. And it's it's we're going to have the same conversation next week when Cork and Kerry face each other in Killarney. We're going to have the same conversation about the Munster Championship. Is the rivalry dead and stuff like that? And honestly, I just think it takes these sorts of counties, sleeping giants more, uh, more than anything, to gain more um, improvement in the next few years. Starting off with having this game at Park Talton, that would have ignited something in the rivalry at least. You're, mm. If you keep these games in Crow Park, then you're just going to let this rivalry die of death. And low crowds, low attendances, less of an atmosphere, like that's going to kill the rivalry as well. So... So, yeah, I, th I honestly think it goes down to the counties that are struggling more than the counties that are doing well at the moment. The counties are doing well. They, look, it's not their fault. It's not Dublin and Kerry's fault. It's the faults of these counties that historically did well, but are now struggling. And more infrastructure needs to be put in. More, um, more of the right people have to be behind the scenes as well. And more young talent coming through. The likes of Keir McBride, Matthew Costello, Owen Frayne need to develop in years to come as well and even in the first half like, there was some bright sparks from youngsters like Adam O'Neill at full back I thought was good enough in the first half I thought he held well against uh, that Dublin full forward line but then the fitness the fatigue just caught up with him and that will improve in the next few years like Adam O'Neill I think is what 20-21 years of age 
he will improve in the next few seasons. Owen, Rex, Owen Frayne's only 20. You have Jordan Morris still in his early 20s. You have Matthew Costello still in college with DCU. There are some good young players in me, but it only takes a matter of time for them to develop even more. But I think it would have been a great opportunity, honestly, Aaron, to have this game in Park Talton. Why the Leinster Council decided to put it in Crow Park, I don't know. Yeah, and I think the problem as well is like you have a young me team there, but like there could be a lot of them lads at the start of next year that might be like, well, what's the point? Do you know, like going into the Leinster Championship again, doing the same thing over and over. And Mead's team probably has changed quite a lot over the last couple of years. There has been a lot of players that have come in and out. Um, obviously, Como Work has built sort of a, a new team very much from from scratch, really, since he's come in. Um, you think back to Kildare, their side has changed quite a bit over the years. So it, it is it is an issue, all right. And um, I think the big problem, like a lot of the time, is because of the fact that attendances in Crow Park were so good in the 2000s. Like, you know, you used to get 60 to 70,000 in Crow Park throughout those years in the Leinster Championship. And it was, you know, packed to the brim. And you don't really have any other stadiums in Leinster that can accommodate really those kind of crowds and um even even say for example twenty one thousand today like the only probably stadiums that could accommodate that in Leinster are probably what Port Leash, Tullamore maybe like Park Talchin's obviously eleven thousand. So that's probably what they're looking at. That that's what they're thinking of. They're thinking of, you know, we'll get twenty or we'll get twenty, twenty five thousand in. The atmosphere will be terrible, but we'll generate more revenue. So you know that's the that's the most important thing to them at the end of the day. So um, you know, it's it's but the thing is that the attendances are just going to shrink and shrink and shrink to the point where you know there's, there's going to be nobody going to the games, um, or you know, a couple of thousand or whatever. So, yeah, it's just, um, it, it is a little bit mad. Uh, Era says here, scrap Leinster Championship. What the F is the point? It's just training for Dublin, absolutely pointless. Um, Sean, he says a big football county like Mead need to be better. Look what Derry are doing with much smaller population. Look, and that is a fair point as well. Do you know, like, I mean, look at Monaghan, what, what they've, I know they've had a poor enough year this year, but look what they've achieved in the past. Um, it can be done. Maybe beating Dublin and Leinster and maybe um, challenging Dublin for all Orleans will be very, very difficult. But you can certainly get up, you know, you can certainly improve the level. You can cer certainly make a fist of, fist of that and make these games more competitive. But um, it probably isn't easy when you do keep having these games every year, in fairness. But... Just getting back to Era's point here about scrapping the Leinster Championship, I was kind of thinking of this on the way home as well. Let's say tomorrow the Leinster Championship was scrapped. Would there be anyone that would actually be outraged? I don't know if there would be, to be honest. As of uh, the Leinster Championship, in the situation it is right now, I, I don't think there'll be any outrage, no. Um, at the same time, there is there's still that nostalgic feel about the Leinster Championship with Leash winning it, with Westmead winning it, with Mead winning it, with Loud almost winning it. But for um, you know, a certain incident happening, I'll, I'll um, leave that off this podcast. Um, Kildare winning it in 20, 2000 was a brilliant memory as well. These are the memories that we cling on to for the provincial championships, and it'll be the same. Like to be honest. I think we're questioning Leinster and Munster. They're the two that we're questioning. What is the point of these championships? We know the end results of what's going to happen. Dublin and Kerry are going to win it. I think the honest thing that we're clinging on to with the uh, provincial championships is, number one, the shock results. What we had last week with Watford beating Tipperary, with Wicklow beating Westmead. I think Lee Keegan and uh, Kira Whelan touched on the Sunday game um, and, and before the game today. Um, and then number two, you have Connacht and you have Ulster, who are two very competitive provinces. And it'll be interesting actually to see if Sligo could put it up to Galway next week. If Sligo could put it up to Galway, um, not not necessarily win the game, but if they could close within uh, five within five points of uh, Galway next week, would there be outrage about Mead's performance today? So that's maybe a question that we we'll have to think about next week. But look, look, it's. Uh, yeah, I don't think there'd be outrage considering the stuff that's that's in place right now. But all it takes is for one decision to change everything. And I think the key decision for this, and I keep emphasizing the point, have these quarterfinals outside Crop Park. Because it's just going to make it easier for Dublin. Having a part of And another venue, actually, Northern Park in Kilkenny. I know Kilkenny is not a football county, but it's actually a decent ground. I've been there before. It actually has three stands and one terrace which is very unusual for a GA ground, but it's more like a soccer ground. It's actually really, really good. And it's really good infrastructure and stuff like that. Why can't Leinster Championship Games be there? 
And why can't they be in Tullamore or Port Leash or that are well capable of venues as well? I've been to those venues. They're probably one of the best venues I've ever been to as a GA fan. So why aren't Leinster games on in those venues for quarterfinals and semifinals? That's where they should be, not Crow Park, because it just makes it easier for Dublin to waltz over every opposition that they face there. So I think that's that's a starting point for the Leinster Council. Have games outside of the final, outside of Crow Park. That's what the hurling are doing. And the hurling are actually doing well enough. At, uh, promoting the game at various like Godwin Kilkenny out in um, Pierce Stadium. You've, uh, you've Nolan Park being used there as well. You've Tullamore being used if Offaly are in it. So why can't it be used for the football? Hmm. Th- that is, that's a question that the Leinster Council need to uh, answer in the next few seasons. Absolutely. And maybe the last thing on this, um, because I do agree, like I think, yeah, like may- the Leinster final in Crow Park, yeah, yeah, fair enough, maybe keep that. But every other game, yeah, I think, and, and I think maybe we, we should look at other provinces and do a home and away rule, even, um, and, and and maybe even put Dublin back into Parnell Park. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but there definitely some needs to be a lot more done in regards to that. But like the ladies' football championship, for example, and their provincial championships, like they're obviously a lot different to the men's football championships. Like they're seeded based off of I think just Division One and Two teams. So say for example last year in the Leinster ladies football championship it was dublin mead and leash and they all went into group stages and then the top two went into a final is that something maybe they should look at really because even like when you're having for example galway beating london last week um and i know at the same time like as i've said previously the exposure for these teams is is good to a certain extent to get the opportunity to play bigger teams but at the same time if they could start seeding the lens uh, the, the the provincial champions i think that might start helping a lot of things what do you think i think it would be as well i think it would be um, a great move to do but at the same time someone actually mentioned this i think it was daryl connor from uh, the sideline view actually mentioned this uh point that um if the ga are going to take advice from the ladies football then it will um downgrade their kind of confidence and things like that in a way um, that they'll say that look we don't want to be taking advice off uh, the LGFA because they're a lesser organisation than us and look I, I think it's time to do so I really think it is like um, this year actually in the Leinster Championship you have Kildare, Leash, Mead and Dublin and to be fair Kildare and Mead are actually um, you know doing well with the seeding Kildare were the intermediate championship last year in the LGFA and they won that championship and they won division two this year and have won I don't know how many games in a row as well other than a draw against Tyrone in the league this season and they've gained a bit of confidence and they're moving into a game against Dublin now I think a week or two weeks time and this they have confidence and they have players coming back into the team now that usually would be abroad but are now playing football the likes of Roisin Bird, Lara Corr and all them and that comes with confidence so I think it wouldn't be a bad idea for Leinster to do this. So as as um, the championship stands, so it would be the senior teams. So I guess it would be Meads, West Mead and Louth in the Leinster Championship with Dublin, and then the rest into an intermediate Leinster Championship. I, I'd imagine that would be the thing because Kildare are Division 3 now. So, so yeah, I think that would work. I honestly think that would work. But the Leinster Council have to do something. Or is the Leinster Championship just going to die of debt? And um and yeah, home and away agreements. That's another thing that needs to be looked at as well. But they need to be look looking into these solutions rather than just sitting back and watching Dublin um waltz through every game. And I've seen somebody from the Leinster Council actually say that the Leinster Championship is alive and kicking. Lads, look at the result today. Like that's the second best team in Leinster coming up against Dublin and they get hammered by mm. double digits. Like, what, what are you expecting to happen the next day against Offaly? Seriously. So it's, you know, I think they need to stop with these stupid comments and come up with solutions to try and fix the Leinster Championship rather than saying, oh, everything's okay, okay, everything's okay. It's clearly not okay. Look at the results. So, yeah, yeah they need to do something. Need to do something. 